here today to hear from Major James Beardsley, who knows all about thrift stores, and he started the hard way with something akin to a garage sale, where you pull out the stuff and you kind of buy it on the weekend and then you shove it back in the garage. And since then he's been in charge of two different stores and now two in South Dakota, one of yes. which gets over a million, million dollars a year. Right. And he says he's been out on the limb for creative things, and these are some great tips you can all take back home and try it where you are. So, with no further ado, please welcome Major James. Oh, yay. Well, Yogi Berra said it best. If you can't uh, imitate him, don't copy him. So don't try it, folks. <laughs> if you can't, and there's a difference. Uh, Yogi says about imitating and copying. If you're copying something, you just kind of take the idea of it all. If you're going to imitate something, you become it. You are a part. You're just not the original. And uh, but uh, it's a, you can fool many of the people because you're imitating, but uh, you're not copying. And so I would say what I offer you today is something that uh, you really uh, uh, you can you can do some, you can copy some, you can imitate some, but you're not going to be able to take all of it unless you've got a town uh, like Rapid City, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that uh, in a moment. Uh, we have a great. Uh, thrift store. Now, now let me let me take that back. Uh, we, we don't have a great thrift store. We have a great family store. That's our 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 model. We, we are a family store. We're not a thrift store. We're not a, a resale shop. We we are our own unique store, and we are a family store. And uh, we call ourselves uh, that in in all of our advertisement uh, that we're we're the family store. Uh, a typical store, and uh, if any of you have, how many of you have stores? Okay, we got a few. If you've got a store, it's going to be somewhere between uh, 6,500 and uh, 8,000. It might vary a little bit, but pretty much those are the, the standard sizes of stores that I've checked in Nebraska and Michigan and uh, South Dakota. Uh, your general sales, about uh, 228. Uh, and you're, if you've got welfare vouchers, if you're, you're doing your welfare vouchers through your store, you might be uh, paying out $2,600, maybe $2,700. Rags, $7,000, depending on where you're getting them and, and what price you're getting. And of course, that makes your grand sales at uh, 238 Now that's uh, pretty typical, and it was typical of our store six years ago uh, and up to four years ago. This was it. It was right downtown, uh, right on the edge of the main street that was shooting through. And so we had about uh, 10 parking stalls um, along with it. You could see the dock off on the far side way over there uh, and all the trash that's uh, hanging out around your docks. Pretty typical store there. Um, we had uh, our retail was uh, 5467 Our processing area was 1500 and 600 for the dock, which brought it in that, that range I was giving of uh, 7,600 square feet. Uh, we had one manager, one driver, three dock people, a cashier, uh, a pricer, uh, a ragger, and then an app, uh, somebody in the appliance, which was also our electronic guy that would fix and make sure all the vacuums worked correctly. This was the, the layout. Am I in your way? I'll keep moving back and forth. Uh, the, uh, you can see it's pretty typical. We had two retail areas, small office, the handling and packaging in the back, and of course then the storage slash dock area. And uh, there was a, a I, in my notes, I've also got a little extra uh, asterisk because part of the storage was, or our dock was also a, uh, a tent area that they would put out, one of those awnings. And during the summer, they put the awning out and that would give us more space for the dock. Um, but that was it. Uh, we had uh, general store sales of uh, 372, so we were above the average, uh, again. Uh, uh, Rapid City, uh, at the time of this store going on, was a little over 50-some thousand. So we had a lot of people, but we draw all of West River, which is, you know, 70,000, or what is this, yeah, 70,000 square miles. 
uh, which is huge. So, I mean, we, we get, everybody comes into the big town, the big city, that's us. So they would come over. And so we've got, we'd have a lot of weekend people. And so our numbers were up. Our welfare vouchers, we were sending over from our social services vouchers to the store of 12,000. Now, I give you that because then what we would do uh, is at the end of the month they would send me the vouchers back and I would mail them a check from out of our account to the store to pay for them. I did that so that the United Way and your donors and that, when you talk about what you do, uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll gladly show them all the vouchers to the food store or the food pantries and where we're buying uh, stuff, but uh, we don't normally count the stores in there. They got kind of lost. I didn't want that, and then neither did they in Rapid. So we actually pay ourselves. So it was a cost to us in welfare, so we showed it. Now, the nice thing was at the end of the year, we tallied them all up and wrote another check out of the store into the general account. So after two years, we finally have now got a rotating account. Uh, so it's sort of an in and out, but it's showing up on the records. The IRS can see it, and so can your United Ways and all of that. Our expenses, we had 199, pretty typical. Uh, this is a little high, that's two thirds of our uh, general sales, where uh, right now about a third of your uh, expenses uh, as you start moving higher should be your expenses for labor itself. If you're not, then you're going to start getting falling behind. General operating was 30000 small store. You, of course, we have sales tax of 24000 Our welfare vouchers, you see we gave out more welfare vouchers uh, then uh, we actually brought in an income. They just was not drawing income. But we did have a, a grand 405000 But here's the nice thing. Even back then, we had $112,000 was brought to the core. Stores can do this. Stores can make money, and they can be good. Uh, now, I would say this was tolerable. This is good. We, you could tolerate this. If you've got a store and you're bringing in 24000 36000 in a given year, I don't know if that's tolerable to me because there's a lot of headaches and other not seeing things that go in with stores. For thirty six, there might be another way. There might be a, a grant out there that you could go for. There could be other funds that you might be able to do and not spend half your time. You know, let's say we were... We were running this uh, 72 or, or 370 in sales, but our labors were high, but we didn't have that 100. Well, then I just say, it isn't worth it. We're spending more out than we're bringing in. And uh, so you can kind of watch that. We'll talk about that. This is our uh, million dollar store. <laughs> uh, I hate that phrase, by the way. I know people are saying it, and I thought they were kidding me when they talked about, come <coughs> talk to us about your million dollar store. And I'm going, what? Are you kidding me? But it does generate uh, a million dollars uh, uh, to the, uh, our economy. Uh, that brings in a lot when you can say to the community, we are selling and uh, moving about a million dollars worth of material. Uh, Chamber of Commerce loves you because they're putting your name out there. and There's a lot of PR stuff on it. Uh, here's, here's where our store is. Uh, the new store. Uh, 12,600 in retail. Man, we tripled our size. 5,000 in just warehousing, 2,400 in processing, and 900 for the dock. And 900 is too small. We, we have found that out since operating it for four years. The 900 just is on a bit uh, the small size. Um, 20,000, well, 21,000 square feet. So we have tripled. We went from 7,000 up to 21,000. Uh, we have two managers that does not count my regional, and I'll talk about her in a minute, but we have two managers, a general and then a, an assistant, uh, a driver, uh, three dock workers, one of the dock workers is also a helper with the driver, uh, two cashiers, a pricer, a ragger, an appliance or electronics guy, a bedding location now in person, antiques, and then somebody for collectibles. We just changed, yes. Are they all full time? No, um, uh, everyone but a doc person 
and uh, my collectibles. My collectibles, not. She's uh, we just uh, we tried to put her full time, but she's not quite wanting to do that. She's uh, about 70 years old. She's a retired antique dealer from New York City, and um, she came and moved out there with her husband, and uh, came to the army and said, "Hey, she started as a volunteer." And she knows collectibles, mm -hmm. and she knows how to uh, get the money for them. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about her in a few minutes. Uh, here's our store uh, that we came out. This has been three years. We designed it. We built it. Uh, and uh, if you want to know more about the actual operation of it, get a hold of uh, Bob McClintock down in Rockford. He's the one who designed this store. Uh, he looked it over, he kind of said, this is what we've got to have. And uh, it's a, 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 I call it a Morton building or a metal prefabricated steel building. Um, has the large ceilings, you want that, you'll see here in a second why. Uh, but he, he put it all together, he even knows the outs and the ends of it, where there are a few things, that, like we know the dock. You know, after he got it built, he goes, ooh, we, we we can't. And, and a part of our dock is uh, we have our dumpster here in the back, and uh, one of the, the bad parts is we put another building back here, and now uh, if, we, if we try to expand the dock, we've got to move the dumpster back, uh, and it's not, some of the dumpster is not portable. And so we would uh, have to move that back, but then it doesn't give room for the trucks. So we're contemplating when do we decide to pull this building behind us out, and it's three years old, but when do we pull that garage out and be, so that we can expand that dock? And we do have, uh, and you'll, we'll catch it later, you need to know how you're going to expand. So when we bought this property and the land, we own another 300 yards behind us. And we already have in the making the plans uh, to expand the store here. And then this storage will become here. This will become part of processing. The dock will actually come back to here, and we'll cut an opening. The store has been designed that way. The, the, the way the studying and all that's on the inside has been predetermined for the expansion. You want to have that. We can expand this way. The store has been designed if we want to go this way. Go wider. We can because, again, they knew down the road, we want to be able to expand. We want to be able to move this around. So it's a great, great design. However, it costs you a million three, well, it costs us a million three. You've got to have that kind of cash out there uh, or uh, roll the dice to uh, take a mortgage like we did. And, uh, uh, and you've got to be able to fill it. There's the other case. And, and we'll talk about filling here in a minute. Here we go. Here's the numbers, what makes it a million dollars. Uh, 4,596 4, in vending sales. Vending sales is we have candy machines, but we also buy things for our break room, for our staff. And uh, we'll buy from the food bank, we'll sometimes buy it from Sam's Club, but we'll have drinks in there and candy and that for them. And uh, they buy it back from us, so that's our vending. Uh, stores, general sales, one man, and 24,000. Uh, welfare vouchers, 37,351. Uh, uh, you'll note they match. We've now gotten to the point where we make sure that there's a <coughs> check cut at the end of the year. Uh, we do uh, rags, uh, 48. Uh, good news for me, but I'll, I'll share it with all of you. I found out last night we've doubled our rag sales. We're going to get twice the amount for rags. We're going to 17 uh, cents a pound. We, we had negotiated one for our northern store. We have a small store up north and uh, with a different vendor and they were giving us the 17. So we, uh, my general man or my regional manager called them up and said, hey, we're going to have to leave you. We like you, but we just can't afford it because we can get 17 somewhere else. Thank you. And yeah. I understand rags and metal. Shoe sales? Yes. We found this other company said they will not only buy shoes, they'll buy books. And if you want them, give me a call. I'll give you the name. They're out of, um, they are out of California. 
But uh, I'll even give you a name of the, the trucking company that is regional up in here. And they may come and make the deal. They, they are excellent with us. Uh, they just charge us what it takes to get the company moving, and they move it. Uh, but then, like, when we want to move something that, you know, when we need a big truck or a big dock, we just call them. They're like, oh, yeah, and they just donate. They're just a fantastic company, so I'll give you that, too, uh, because th this new company will do our shoes. And uh, you got to put them together. It's, it yeah, takes a little time, so you got to have room. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but yes. Uh, labor, look at this. Now, this is important so that you understand because I'm going to hit this in a few minutes. Uh, 3800 for my labor. You, we have a lot of uh, uh, part-timers, but we also believe that you've got to put the money into this. So we have full-timers, and uh, they're our best workers because they're full-time. They, they've got the health benefits. They, want, they treat us. We are a company. I'll talk a little bit more about that. General operating, 94. The, the place is very uh, easy to heat, cool. We have to cool. Got to remember, we're South Dakota. We are in the hundreds, June, July, August, and part of September. So we have a lot of cooling costs, uh, almost more than heating costs. And uh, sales tax, uh, note this one. Please, please note this because the couple of numbers down the road you're going to see why we're excited. We're, we're trying to get this thing paid off because that's money we're throwing away right now. If I had a capital campaign and had done that, I wasn't there at the time, but had we done that and paid off the mortgage, that would become uh, a part of my appropriation dollars. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, come down here, general sales at 1113000 and see, look at this, three hundred. 335000 to the account. Now, before you all start going, let's, double, let's triple our building size and let's go for it. Do you have a city that can support it? Are you going to actually do that much sales? Are, are people going to come? They're going to drive. They drive from Gillette down. They will, they'll drive from Spearfish down. Are there uh, similar um, uh, stores yours? Is there Goodwill in your community or uh, some other um, brick or secondhand <coughs> activity taking place? Good good question. I was going to catch it later, but yes. Uh, two years ago, uh, the Goodwill came in and uh, started uh, a retail store, which was for building. They would take in building <coughs> stuff and they just sell that, and then they opened it at a general store as well. So uh, they've been there. We took a little hit. Uh, not a huge one, but we did take a hit last year. Uh, just as we, uh, well, we're, we're anticipating coming in now uh, that uh, we, we took a small hit. Uh, we're still a million dollar store, but, you know, it was, I think, a million twenty-five or something like that. And uh, so we did. And, and we can't say 100% it was them because the economy was soft. Uh, so we're kind of watching this year. How, what, what was it? Also, right across the street from us, a thrift store opened six months ago. So we're watching them. We're watching their parking lot. How does our parking lot affect their parking lot? For instance, and it's, it's in here, I'll, but I'll cover it now. We, uh, we notice that they come to us first and then they cross the street. So we're doing great on a Saturday. They'll decide, well, I didn't see anything I wanted. Or, well, since we're here, let's go across the street. So it isn't that they are going strictly for him. He's, he's benefiting for us, and we know that's why he bought this building. We know why, that's why he put it in there. It won't last. We're, we're pretty sure of that one. Goodwill will. They're, they're, up and, they're up and running, and they're making enough. But again, our community has the Goodwill. They have the, uh, a thrift shop that's run by the shelter and us. Uh, we're, we're in the millions. Uh, Goodwill is around 600000 and the other one's around 350000 So there's, but our, our community can support them. And I, I would tell you this, uh, us, the shelters, and the uh, Goodwill, we have quarterly meetings with them. We're all good friends. 
we talked. When this other store opened, that was the first thing we all talked about. How's that going to affect our sales? We got it. They, they aren't competition to us. Uh, now they they we're the we're the golden boys. They want to look at us. Uh, we're able to expand and do some things they can. <coughs> so they have to live with you know it's sort of like the Red Cross and Salvation Army. You know people. Are, oh, I remember the Red Cross did this. Oh, they're nasty. Well, they are. You know, but the story's out there, the rumors are there. And so we try to, we're not in competition with them. We watch them, you know, what the Godfather say, you know, keep friends close, keep your enemies closer. Yeah, we do. We keep my men close. And we have quarterly meetings. And, and uh, but uh, we don't treat them as a, a negative at all. Here's our store. Let's, uh, let's do a quick look at it all right now. Um, this is the outside of the store. You can see how we uh, built it out again. It was a metal building and uh, uh, prefabbed out so that we can, this is, when I said, this is the side view. This is where we could expand out to here or we could expand out the back. We have uh, two dock areas and I'll show you that here in a second too. Uh, this is our new sign. Uh, for two years we didn't have a sign. Uh, they were. It's because we're going to put our family enrichment center on the same property, and uh, they were waiting. And, and I said, I can't wait any longer. I got to get a sign up. And so we went ahead and put the, this sign up. It's digital. It uh, it'll tell you birthdays, and we, it's computer programmed, and we can program it from anywhere as long as we have the download to our computer. And uh, so our staff uh, or our, our manager, she could be out of town and type it in, ship it over to the internet, and it hits the sign. And uh, it's done wonders. Has it affected sales? We don't know. But I tell you, the, 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 uh, uh, the people shopping love it because they're seeing stuff out there. They're coming in and saying, I saw out there that I'm supposed to uh, ask for Ron. Who's Ron? Oh, Ron's our assistant manager. What do you, you see in Ron about? What's that something about like 20% off if I see Ron? Did he put that up there? You know, we always say, that's the standard joke. Did he hold that thought? Do you sell shoes in a retail store, or do you sell them all to this company? No, we do sell them here. Yeah. We do. We we will, uh, we have a, a real, I hate to take questions and to miss them out here, but uh, in the sales, we do, um, and we do like pretty much a standard in the, uh, out our way. You put only one out. Keep one in the back, so if they want to buy it, then you bring the other one out because we have a lot of theft. And they'll steal them. You put two boots out there, they're gone. So we get one out. They steal one, come back the next week. That the other one's never going to be put out. But uh, yeah, it gets kind of interesting. Uh, we do that. Uh, but they're only out. Uh, uh, most of our stuff is, is less than three weeks on the floor. It hasn't sold in three less weeks. Than three weeks on the floor. It's it's gone. It is it's just not going to stay around. You'll see my little grouch. You ready? All right. Well, this is our little welcome. As you walk in the door, this is what you're going to see. This is uh, uh, our store. Very wide, very open, uh, high ceiling, so you get you can put these signs out there. Uh, we are a Walmart uh, in conception. It's just big and open, unlike your standard stores. I've had them, been there. I go visit them and I'll show you one here in a few minutes. Uh, they just drive me crazy. This is standing, uh, I, I was standing by the gumball machine when I took the picture. So this is the opposite side of it. This is back looking toward our uh, boutique uh, up front. Again, you can see the bright. This was a store day. We're operating when this is going on. Uh, shooting out to the women's section and uh, back in the books, and I'll get a better picture here in a minute. Uh, and this is the other side. This is toward our furniture, uh, electricals, it, it, you know, it, uh, it's all sitting out there. And then, uh, of course, we have Sally's Boutique. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more of it in a minute, but uh, that's where we put our collectibles. And just uh, like during um, January, all the lingerie gets up there and stuff that we think that they'll buy for uh, um, Valentine's Day. It's just a, a boutique. And then this is our, we bought out a Borders. They were leaving us. So we went out, they were selling uh, all of the stuff, including the shelving. We bought it. Cost us $6,000, but uh, we, we 
produced it just like they do there. We've got a section for kids over here, the books, place to sit. We have coffee out there for them to buy, or I mean to, to just drink. Uh, we, we wanted to have a place where they could just come and uh, shop and look and read if they want to sit and read. We didn't care. And uh, so uh, we put the money into it and it's, it's paid back big time. This was our electronic area and a, a doorway back to the processing area. But you can see we try to keep things open. Now, I didn't go and say, oh, hey, I got to take pictures on this day, so clean the place up. You're getting my day. I grabbed the camera and ran over across the uh, uh, town, started shooting pictures. So you're getting what our store looked like on that day. Uh, this is our furniture area. I'll get you some better pictures here. But again, you can see the wideness. Uh, we've got the, the panels up above that's white. If we didn't, you know, we don't have a fault ceiling in there. We wanted it very much open. Why put the money into it? They come in, they just love it the way it is. So that's what we did. They're very practical in the Dakotas. Uh, our store manager, or now store manager, she saw this in another store and says, yeah, I want to create this. So she built, took some chicken wire and put it in there, and some old lights from uh, Christmas, painted them red. And now she's got a little area to, to show. Uh, we put our furniture out. We make it look like a furniture shop. We try to put, so if you would come into your living room, this could be the living room. And in fact, it kind of sets a tone. And some people have bought all of them. Now, I was looking for a couch, but boy, I sure like that chair. It goes with that couch. I think I'll buy it. And we've done that. Uh, we also find... A lot of husbands sit here. <laughs> you know, wife's off in the women's section buying something or garden hose, and he's sitting here, and I'll, I'll come in and I'll yak with him. and just say, what are you doing? We're selling that. We, how, how can we sell it with you sitting on it? Hey, I bet we could sell you. All right, hey, mark this a little higher. This old guy's going to go with it, you know. They love it, and uh, but they do. They will sit there. We have areas above that we didn't want to just have sitting empty above ours. And uh, you might have seen this earlier, and I think you'll catch it later. This is uh, this is probably 12 feet off the ground, uh, a little higher. So if they're looking all the way through the store, they see this. And this changes uh, minimum is quarterly, but sometimes uh, every two months. They just put this out mid-April, uh, and we'll keep this out until uh, uh, July. In July, we put out, uh, we have a big bikers rally, motorcycle rally at Sturgis. So in uh, the month of July, we'll put everything on motorcycles out there. Parts, people, <laughs> you know, we've got uh, biker jackets that we've been holding on for a year, leather jackets. They all will go out during that time. So if somebody says I want that umbrella, then somebody climbs up on the ladder. And they can sign. Well, that's for sale we, we sometimes that? we won't if if unless they just got to have it now. We okay. would probably sell that. Yeah. Okay. I know it's priced uh, because I was trying to buy a set of golf clubs that was up there two months ago. <laughs> I said, what those sets, you know? Then I found out they were left handy. So I just, can you put these back? <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. Uh, up on the same rack, we do have our static uh, st uh, stand. We have these out because in our store, in the back section I'll show you here, uh, we do all of our food packing for our boxes at our uh, the other section for social services. So we want them to know that, and we, we have that there. And then in our little display out front, we have a box that's been opened, and we put the stuff out. Um, we have to replace it. We just had everything stolen out of the box. Uh, that was the sad part of it all. This is our dock, and uh, I'll get that there. Uh, note the openness of the dock, and we've said this is already too small. We're just we've got three guys going, and uh, they come in, and it's it's dropped off here. And there are days it's literally full, and it's just packed. Uh, Mondays are the worst because people have come in over the weekend. We we close the dock. That's another little thing. If you're going to have this, close off your parking lot. Shut it down because they will leave it a piece of trash. 
and it's just all over the city, and that's what you're known for. Oh, that's always sharp. Go there on a Saturday, and there's just trash everywhere. We close it down. We lock off our parking lot, and we're on a busy street, so they can't leave it anywhere. That's the rules, folks. We're sorry. We're not going to look. Yeah, it's a trash place for you. Uh, it, during uh, some of the holidays, we, we don't close it, but we close the dock off uh, so they're not dumping on it. But uh, um, we'll get it. But they'll, this is at it. This was uh, this was a Tuesday. We had gotten mostly everything off of it by then. Um, the uh, section over here. This is processing. There's a little door, well, it's a big roll-up door right here. Uh, it goes into here into processing, and uh, we've got the books and antiques. Well, antiques back here. This is uh, brick and brack clothing. Or um, over on this side is the uh, housewares and uh, sheets, towels, uh, furniture up front. Clothing uh, is sorted uh, twice first out front uh, on the dock, and then after that goes right to the back where we have three sorting out, and it it's either goes out to sales or into the ragger right then. We don't handle it more than we have to. This is our back. This is a part of that uh, which many stores don't have, storage. And this is core storage along with store storage and uh, our food storage. Uh, these are all prepped for food. These are boxes that we will make into our food boxes. Uh, this is core stuff that's been stored up there for on the other side of this is all of our toy storage. Uh, all the toys left over from Christmas are on the shelf just like this over here. Uh, we have two uh, forklifts and uh, this is the outside you can see the dock area. We have two dock areas, one that's for semis, and then we have this is our, we call the small dock. This is made so that you can pull up a small truck, some cars, and right there, load up a couch or pull it right out and uh, make it move. Uh, I'm going to go a little quicker here. This is, uh, again, this is our baler. Our baler, you'll see here, let me, let me shoot this ahead because we're, we're running a little quick. Here's the baler. Uh, this baler is right there. You can see she's sorting. It'll go in one of these bins, or if it's clothing, she has a huge table over here. And this person over there will size it, do all the, tag it, hang it up to go out. And um, uh, the rest of it goes into the baler. Baler makes these. They drop it down, and we take the forklift, grab it, and we lift it. We hold enough here for one semi load. And then the semi comes and picks it up. We actually have uh, enough for a semi and one extra row, so that we're always ahead. Um, so the case they call us and say we can't come today, we can't come till two weeks from now. We have enough room so that we can continue bailing because you have to do that or you're, you're in sad shape. Uh, the people that sort your that process your clothes after the original sort, those three people are pricing them also so they're ready to order. Then they go right on the floor. And we've got little racks. Uh, let's see if I can let me go back. Yeah, uh, you can barely see it. Right here is a rack. Uh -huh. And uh, we've got like six of them. And they will be uh, back here. They'll pull them around. You can see here's uh, a group that she's preparing to, to go through. Uh, she'll go through, and they'll get hung up after they've sized them and tagged them then they will go on those racks. And then uh, our, we have a staff person back here that she manages that zone. She'll take them out and they're, they're going out. We have stuff hitting the floor every day. Uh, we, uh, we have people who will come and shop every day because every day new stuff, stuff's going out. And by that means if something hasn't been selling, like I said, if it's been there three weeks, it's gone. We don't have time to hold it then. It could be a brand new shirt, but if it's been there three weeks, it goes to the ragger. Do you ever launder anything? No, we haven't. Uh, we get a, a lot of our stuff on our way. Uh, if it's that dirty, we just pitch it. You know, it, it is. It, we uh, normally you zone it or, or you classify it three, four ways. There's an A, B, C, D. 
Uh, D being it's just no good or it's filthy, get rid of it. C is kind of, well, it's dirty, but you know. we We uh, just deal with A and B, and only in the wintertime when we don't get a lot of stuff in do we ever even do C. So we're unique. Again, that's what makes us a million dollars. We're selling what would be your top end stuff. We get a lot of it in, and I've got the place to do it at, so we're selling your top end stuff. You know, you get in a small community, you're not, you, you, and depending on the community, sometimes in the communities, you're getting a lot of C's and D's. You're not getting A's. You just don't. And that means you have to put up with what it is. So that's why I say, don't try to say, oh, double my space or whatever, I'm going to do this. I, I'm in a large city. Are your C's and D's going automatically to the regs, or do you have, do you Well, well C's the garbage, will be put in a separate little bin area, a okay. uh, little tote. They're uh, about uh, five by five and four, in, four feet deep uh, to be re-looked at depending on what's going on. If, if we're getting a lot going on, once that box is full, if it didn't go out, then it's getting chucked. And it's, uh, it's just a, it's back here across from here, mm -hmm. from that, is where that bin is. But if it gets full, and we haven't started floating to it or going to it, right. they wheel it over, it goes in the ragger, and then we put it back. So our seas will go out. But if, like in the wintertime, I know January, February, March, we're putting them out. Okay. And what is your population? Uh, right now, 67,000. Now, I'm drawing from almost 90,000. That's Spearfish, that's Deadwood, um, Lead. Uh, all of those areas are coming in to us. We have the reservation. Now, you know, what do I got? Uh, 85,000 Native Americans, adults, and they're coming in every Thursday to shop uh, at Walmart and then. Uh, on welfare day was when the checks come out and they're, they're getting their Native American money. Mm -hmm. They will come in. And so we're packed that first uh, Tuesday and uh, through Thursday of the month because they're coming in and they're doing their shopping. And um, so, uh, you know, we got a different flavor out there. And I, I, I hate to say, you know, because I could stand here and just say, yeah, you need to do this. This is fantastic. We're unique. I'm not saying it can't work, but make sure you sit down and talk with business people that who, who know the area. That's what came about this. We had the small store. We were being told, you know, we need to get more room and space and that. We sat down with some business people and said, all right, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And uh, a big gentleman uh, makes a lot of money in, in doing stones and rocks and a rock quarry. Uh, he says, I think we can do this, and I think we can do this piece and this piece, and I think if we market this, and I know this company who will build it for cost, and, uh, you know, he just sold us on it. And then we said, okay, that sells us. Can we sell Chicago? And, you know, he did. But see, we got a $100,000 mortgage that we pay every month or year as well. Well, that's easy because, again, he sold them in that th we can do this because of the clientels we have coming in. Clientele. All right. Let me, let me move on. I want to get, here's some management tips. According to, to Yogi, uh, not really, uh, Walt Disney. Uh, no, kind of him too. Uh, all right, Major Beardsley's uh, uh, management tips. Uh, but not, no, and I ain't going to do that. We'll, we'll do all three. Here, are the, here they go. What does Yogi say? Nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. What's he saying? What do you mean nobody goes there? It's too crowded. Well, he was talking about a restaurant he used to go to and uh, would go there all the time when he was in St. Louis. Then after he went to the Yankees and he's out doing some things, he goes back to visit. And uh, all the people he used to know at that restaurant weren't there anymore. People pe started picking up on it. There's Yogi's favorite place. There's Joe Brown's favorite place, and they started coming, and so his comment was, well, nobody goes there. Basically saying, nobody I know goes there anymore. It's just too crowded. Well, how do you get there? How do you get one of those? Well, if you run a business, you can't overlook anything. You have to be hands-on, making sure in order, making sure the customers are content, and making sure they want to come back. That's Yogi's principles. That's what you got to have. And I hope you picked up on it. You can't overlook anything. 
You have to be hands-on. Everything has to be in order. Customers are content, and they want to come back. Key pieces. Understand, that's what it's really all about. So let's take a look at, you can't overlook anything. Who said it? Right there. Thrift store? Eh. No! That went through all kinds of committees. Our property committee, our store yeah. committee, it, yeah. our manager's group, it went to, to Omaha, our headquarters, it came back, my d development director, I, it hit my desk, and it gave, got put up, and the day it got put up, the first thing everybody started screaming is, I didn't think we were a thrift store. How did we miss it? That's going to cost me 300 bucks to change that thing. And we are. We are. We're going to change it. But it, it was like, what? You, you have to notice things. You've got to know. When we hear rumors of across the street, there's a thrift shop going in. How many people are parking there? Where are they getting their furniture? Who's dropping off over there? First day they opened up, we noticed two trucks pulled over there. And then turned around, came around, came to us. They thought they were us. They thought it was a satellite office. And that's where we should drop off our furniture. They put a big sign out there, donations, and pointing in. So we put up on here, don't go next door. No, we, we kept threatening to put a big sign going, this is it, but we didn't. Uh, but you have to notice those things. You have to have, you know, you've got to be very observant to what's going on and uh, get a part of it. Another one, uh, it, also a detail. When my staff is not doing, all staff has at least three jobs. And uh, here's one of them. This is uh, one of the dock workers. Uh, you saw how light it was getting on the dock. So he, we don't have to ask. We don't have to say anything. He grabs a pan and uh, broom, and he's out doing cigarette butt patrol uh, out in front of the store. And uh, he's out there picking it all up. And I just had, I was leaving uh, to, uh, to go somewhere, and I pulled out, and there he was. I said, oh, I'll take this picture. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, they're out there busy. We take care of the little things. Uh, you have to be hands-on. This is my hands-on people. Uh, Dorothy, this is uh, the one facing us. She's my regional manager. We have two stores. One of them is 45 minutes away in Spearfish. And so she runs up there twice a uh, week uh, on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Dorothy, uh, Sarah is the manager of the current store in Rapid, and Ron has just now become our assistant manager. We wanted to have a manager on 24-7, uh, well, except for Sunday. And uh, so to have that, we had to get a manager in there. We had to have somebody we could trust with all the keys and everything. And uh, Ron had been on the dock for years, and uh, we, we went to him and said, would you consider taking on the role of manager and being on on Saturday? and being off Sunday, Monday, and he said, yeah, I'd love to do that. So uh, he's taken on the job, and uh, they're having their uh, monthly meeting, a uh, quarterly, bi-monthly meeting, and uh, uh, talking about everything from employees to what's gonna be on special, what's gonna go on the sign, everything. You've got to be involved, and, and uh, I'll talk about it again a little bit later, but. Uh, as officers, you've got to take a look at what kind of time you're going to put in on it. You know, those are the things that, if you, you know, you know let, me, let me get a little further here because you'll see it. Uh, make sure that uh, everything is in order. This look like your store? Nope. Uh, looks like a lot of them I've been in. <laughs> you get in there and you go, it's a typical store. You know, you just kind of walk through and go, holy smokes, how can you? find anything in here. Um, this is ours. Again, remember, you put the furniture in like it's a furniture store. You've got, this is the books in the back. We even make it look this way in the back. This is going to go out and prepped to go on the shelves. And so it's by author and, uh, and by zone. So uh, we know that when it goes out and they're put out. 
uh, our display cases. Uh, we bought these. We looked for this stuff. When it goes on sale at another store, we found these last year at another store. They were getting rid of five of them, and we bought them and redid the store for them. Uh, this is just a general over in the boutique area. But uh, you've got to have everything in order. I was telling you, we double sort. This is the guys, as stuff come in, they sort here. If it's trash, it goes out this back door to the trash. Uh, they will call in our lead people uh, from this. She's from our brick and brack area. She's looking over a metal uh, lamp that came in with this. And it's the, they're for outdoors on a patio. There was a lot of rust on it. And the workers were going, we're not sure. So they call her in. You budget for store improvements as part of your annual operating costs? Yes, yes. Uh, we do about 10000 a year just for improvements. So if they want to buy something, the racks that we, we bought, sometimes we'll get racks. We uh, had to buy a, a forklift. Like those uh, display cases you bought? Display you had, cases? You had yeah. money, you had a fund that already that's set it. up. Yeah, that. that, that's global. That's not, uh, uh, that's not taking out of our capital. That's budget. Right. Yeah. And so they know if, if they don't have it in the budget, don't ask. Uh, last year we did go a little bit extra uh, for the when uh, borders. No one knew borders was going to go out. But they had a chance to buy all of those bookshelves and take them. They were in these little portable cases that was set in a certain area. And they always would look junky because by the end of the day, people were sorting through them. They came to me and said, look, it's going to cost us $6,000 to buy all these. We only got 5000 left, and we go over budget. Uh, we rolled the dice and said, yeah, and it's work. People are coming out. They're, they're looking at the site. So, uh, But it's, it, everything is double-checked. We've got in our sorting, uh, this here is a, it crunches it all up. It, it actually compacts it and uh, into here. But then we have a bigger one for the couches, the chairs that you're throwing away here. And then out front, we have not found a place back here. Uh, you can see here's that shed I was telling you about. We can't expand back until we get rid of that. We'd like to, but until we get rid of that building, but that has our canteen in it and all of our services, so we're, we're kind of worried about that one. So do you refuse yep. things at the dock? What's that? When people drop things off, do you refuse them at the dock? Or do you take we can, we, and we have a sign up that says we can refuse, especially couches, uh, bedding. We check them over before they leave, and if they've got lice or uh, if they've got bed bugs, we don't take them. If it's something, if it's just plain trash, we just tell them this is trash. Now, we've trained our workers because when Aunt Zephy shows up and she's got that cat uh, couch, you know, the one that her cat's lived in for 30 years, you know, and it's dear old Aunt Zephy, but this could be used, you know, she's from World War One and she won't throw anything away, and she's telling you, they can really use this. I, there's a lot of life left in this couch. You know, they just go, she's being thank you, Aunt Zephy. We just love this. We'll, yeah, bye. And then wait for her to get halfway down the street, and then, you know, it's gone. Nothing's ever thrown away while the, the person's standing at the top. It just isn't. Uh, but you take it. What's that? But you took it. We took it. We did. We took that couch. Uh, we we kind of know. If we see and just know that these people are just dumping on us, we tell them we can't. Refrigerators, uh, unless we can look at them and just know that they would run. Uh, but we have refused some. But then again, we, uh, you're, and, and I, I think I mentioned it later, your trash bill should go up. You're going to get a lot of trash. You get a good dock running in that, you get a lot of trash. So plan on that budget, have the space, get the big dumpster, and don't get the little ones that you gotta keep calling them. Just get a big one. We have, uh, you saw the size of ours. This one on this side, the same size as here, but it's covered and gets done, and these both get picked up twice a week. Yeah, That's how much trash. That What's that? Yeah, the truck that goes in the house to pick it up? Yeah, well, we do. We have a truck, and uh, I think it's all, we do pickups four days a week, uh, but that has to be furniture and usually more than just a couch, but uh, depending on their address. We have a little form, we kind of go through with them and talk to them and kind of weeds them in and out on what we will, but we do have a pickup. We have a driver and then he takes one of the dock people 
and off they go. Uh, we get a lot of furniture uh, and material from um, the uh, uh, hotels. Uh, they, you know, your customers uh, have to be content. Uh, this is just some shots. We, we can't sell certain trash in, in our store. No matter what we do, it, it just causes an uproar. Uh, if it's not Vikings and it's not uh, Denver, uh, we just, you know, this becomes trash and we throw it away. So you send that back here to one of our stores, right? You can send it to I should have, I should have. This is funny because uh, this had come in the day before. That came in the day I was doing the uh, picture taking. I said, hold that up. I'm going to Wisconsin. you got to put that up. Now, I'm a Bears fan, so I almost puked in it. But um, they, uh, we get the, we'll get this stuff. And uh, it's funny because we'll, we'll hang it up and stuff like that. And we did have one earlier, uh, about two years ago, that was in our display up high. Of course, that was the year you went to the Super Bowl. And uh, it started out, it was like a buck and a half. And when they started winning, I says, pull that down and take that tag off. Because that's going to go for 15 bucks in a week. And sure enough, when, when you won the Super Bowl, that was a $15 coat. And we got it. You know, so uh, actually, this has now been. You saw that one back of the back thing. We got this sitting in back. So if you go to the Super Bowl this year, I'm gonna get 15 bucks for that jacket. Okay. How much? Uh, 15 bucks. 15 bucks. We'll sell it for. But uh, you gotta, you gotta make them come back. You gotta make them want to come back. Uh, you know, you. Um, what time do we go here? Three. 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 Okay. Uh, you know, you can observe a lot by just watching. You gotta go over there, you gotta watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip through here's our little secrets. They're there. Oh, I wanna cover this. This is Santa. This is in the advertising and publicizing through Facebook. We have a Facebook page. This is just went out, you saw twenty hours ago. It's probably now twenty four hours or more. And uh, Santa, he's at Christmas time, we put Santa out here. And uh, he dances. He's got three different dances he does at the front desk. Uh, he's about six foot tall, and uh, he'll, he'll do his little dance. Last year, for a PR thing, we stuck him, uh, or we took him around all day uh, to different stores and places in the Black Hills and took his picture. And, uh, they, uh, and then we put it on our Facebook page and said, if you tell us where you saw him or he's at, you can recognize where he's at. And we would take it like this. And you kind of go, well, I'm not sure where that's at. And uh, then uh, but people would say, now, wait a minute. I think that's the back of the Salvation Army store. And first one that puts it on our Facebook page that that's where it is, they get 20 bucks off uh, or $20 gift certificate. And uh, so it was such a great hit. We, we had hundreds of hits on our Facebook page from people guessing and, and saying, well, is it here? Is it? We decided this year not to do just stores. We're going out to locations. So Santa has taken off. And uh, I'll give you a warning if you go on our site. One of the sites he's going to be at is at the Monument. We, uh, we drove up there and said, hey, can we, can we go and get a picture of Santa at the Monument? So. Well, it was after hours. And, yeah, come on in. You just throw him up there, and he's got his little suitcase and picture of the monument behind him. And we're gonna, we've already taken him all over the, the Black Hills. He's been in Spearfish, and he's been in Spearfish Canyon, and uh, down at the lake, and there's, there's Horseshoe Lake, and Horse Thief Lake, and he's been at all of them. And we took pictures, and we'll just throw them up on our website. And people, you, you get people going to do that. You also get, like last year at the stores, the stores loved it. You know, we had a jeweler who just thought that was great. You, you want to come to my store? Yeah, so we were at, you know, so-and-so's jewelry store, you know, and he was looking over the diamonds, you know. It was kind of fun. They loved it, we loved it, and we got a PR out of it. So you, you kind of want to, you want to do stuff like that. How many customers of yours have Facebook? How many are Facebooking? Well, we've got over 250 friends. So 250 that are Facebooking. Yeah, people want to know what you're doing. Now, some of those are out of towners, you know. It's better than just the internet. It's better than just 
Well, There's yeah, a website. You, you have to, you really have to get out there. If you're going to PR, you've got to get into Twittering and Tweetering and all those things. You've got to know this stuff because people watch that. Do you guys sell anything online? Yes, we do have, and we have created a, a Google account for uh, going on and uh, selling. Uh, we do uh, the bigger, I big ticket items. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a painting out there right now. Uh, uh, we believe we will get about thirty thousand for it. It is a master painting wow. done by a local vendor. It's probably worth forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. We will get thirty online. If we put that in the store, we'll get a hundred dollars for it. Great. Yeah. So we no, and our collectible lady. Uh, I was going to mention her. Our collectible lady is, is just phenomenal. We did, we just bought her a $600 diamond uh, machine. It checks, there's now synthetic diamonds, not those zirconiums. These are synthetic diamonds, and they look like and test just like real diamonds. But uh, uh, you know, they're looking at them, which she does, she couldn't tell. Uh, they're, they're at least 50% more in sales if we know if it's a real diamond. So she went on, we bought 600 bucks for the machine in the first week, it paid itself off. Wow. Because she found we had a little jump area where we thought it was all fake, we weren't sure, and uh, she just took those, sorted it out, and found a whole bunch of reels that, that appeared to her to be iffy. Yeah. But with this machine, she verified it. We have a little certificate we can put with it. So does she spend her time putting some of her pieces online to sell? Yes, we do that. And then also, uh, this continual promotion, we actually uh, have a kiosk down at our Civic Center. And in it, we will put out, like uh, during the fall months, uh, is November through December, and just before December 25th, we sell everything in it. Uh, we have the diamonds and jewelry and you know all the neat little things, uh, the bracelets, and uh, she makes sure that that gets filled and then changes that out every two months and puts out new stuff into it. Uh, it's costing me $1,200 for it, but we make the money back. Mm -hmm. and, and we even said when we took it out, we don't care if we make the money back. The PR of it is enough. we we got to do that. And that's how you draw your, your funds in. Now, you know, it's a, kind of an iffy uh, product for Salvation Army to get Explain into that. Two. Explain number two. What's that? Explain number two. Number two is expand your marketplace. Uh, remember, this is Walt Disney. They've expanded to all these all places the because they said, this is what we got to do. Well, what we're saying is you got to go to the Internet, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. You've got to get out of your store and get yourself into the marketplace. I thought you meant you had to go to Dairy Glass or Disneyland. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. But you got to take from them. you got to look. What did they do? You know, like sell to your present customers. You know, you give a guy that's coming in every week or once a month a 10% discount because you like him. Whatever reason you want to do, you give him a little card. says, you're my favorite customer. Here's $10. All right. Card, five bucks off. We've got, we have over a hundred people on our list of favorite customers. They come in, they got a card for 10% off any time. So we had some TVs given. They, we had so many of them, we jacked them up to $50 and sold them at 50% off. 19 inch TV, it was at a hotel. Nice TVs, they are flat screens, but that's what they are. 25 bucks a piece because they're 50% off. Well, we have these guys that had their 10% card too, you know. So they're going, well, I get 10% off to win. So, yeah. So they even made even more. And that's okay because then they're coming back. They're buying more. They know they can get another 20% off by coming in. You know, they got $10 to spend. They're going to spend $10. You give them a percentage off, they're still going to spend 10 so we want their 10 bucks. So let's get them in. And then they come back more. We have people who come into our shop weekly, some daily. We have other bookstores. Uh, what does that call that show? There's a show where they 
they're not hoarders, uh, but they'll rebuy and fix it up and resell it. We have those people. They will come in and buy for their thrift store. They're mad at us because we do stuff in permanent pen. Or we'll stamp the book, Salvation Army. And, well, I can't resell this. It ain't my fault. You know. So they try to get in there before we stamp them and, and buy them because then they can take them to theirs. We sold last year for uh, $200 a baby carriage, an old one, uh, from the 50s that was uh, canvas. $250 we sold it for. I was driving by the place on the way home and saw it. Now it was, it was maroon instead of the old canvas colored brown. Went in, same one. We had marked it. It was there, same one. They just painted it uh, a maroon, and they were selling for 500 and they got it. Do I care? Eh, go ahead. I got 250 for it. I was okay. I'll let that. You know, we got to get it out the door. Couldn't keep it around. You know, if you keep it, you're losing. Um, this is, uh, like I said, we had Sally's Boutique. And uh, let me go back to that. In this, we, we started Sally's Boutique uh, two years ago so that we could just have a little area for the glitzy things. It isn't... Uh, uh, the collectibles, these are just unique things. And you can see, here's where we always put out all of our Coca-Cola stuff goes up there. Old bottles, uh, chipped glass, you know, it's all going to go in here. We started, we bought those book areas, and we had that. We had over 100 people at the opening of this. We had donuts and coffee, and we had the news media there. They loved the thought. We said, oh, borders closed, so we started a new borders here. Do you price your books individually? Or are all no. the covers a certain price? Yeah, all of it's a certain price. And paperbacks are whatever? No. Okay. Whatever, I, I think it's 50 cents, whatever. Yeah, they're pretty standard. Okay. Now, we do sort them. Like I said, if you go back here, you're going to find, uh, I know that if you're looking for Tom Clancy, he's right about in here. <laughs> I know right where he is. I'm looking at that place all the time. The Tom Clancy is in here, and the hard Tom Clancy's are right here. could tell you that. This is where they go. We pre-sort in the back. We put it out. You've got to treat your store like your Walmart. You do. You want to get to this level. It's a different thinking. It really is. Uh, 3 o'clock. Uh, annual. Keep track of everything. This is our in tracking. This is what we did. I can tell you. Here's the boutique. See, we started it. And 11, look at this. I can tell you that, and I can tell you, oh, look, 17, 17, 22. Oh, look at this, 78, it stands as total, but look at this, summer. Well, it looks like my spring is the best time for the boutique, isn't it? Ah, so we want to run sales when? Not then, if people are buying. Well, let's do it over here. Let's do it in the fall. That's the best time, because that's what I want to get more sales on. You know, we look down here in the women's department, where, what, you know, what do we got here? Well, that looks like it's pretty consistent, although summer, we're getting less. You've got to know that. Now, we have a program. Yeah, on your register, I mean, I'm asking this. I worked three years at ARC Milwaukee Finance, and in that case, they're in a, now in a fund line. But anyway, uh, are you guys using standard registers, or are you guys using the new point of sales? You know, I am not 100% sure the sales company that we're using. Uh, or you know, for what we have is our all of our computers are computerized, or all of our cash registers are computerized, linked into our system. Every sales is categorized. We tell it. Yep, time sync, everything. So I mean, we have it. We have to adjust it if we add spots. We say, oh, we've added Sally's boutique. We wanted that, so we went in, put in boutique, and now so you'll note because this went up, some of these went down. And that's because the money has shifted. Right. So, the only reason I brought it up was because of the consideration of it is for like anybody that's going to upgrade their stores and just from you know, experiences. The point of sale machines are great if you limit the number of new computer orientation or equipment in uh, categories. If you make it more complicated, it makes it tougher for your pricing. And then if you go to barcode scanning, unless you have it, mass quantity produced, it's going to cost you more than your labor. Um, I inherited the $6,000 system when I got to the Fond du Lac that is now sitting on a shelf because we couldn't make it work 
because, uh, well, let's face it, you get one pair of jeans, you get two pairs of shoes, it's not like we're going through a hundred pairs of jeans. Oh, yeah, no, we could. We just type in jeans or five dollars or whatever. Right. They type in that number, not run barcode. They just do a quick number. Exactly. Old one might be shoes, because and it, it clicks in. Corridors and the whole nine yards. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to sell to anybody, but um, on the other hand, I have six thousand dollars worth of equipment that's just sitting. Yeah, and you can't. You, can't be used. you put the money into the equipment. Put your money into your staff. Yeah. Train them. Get them done. Uh, good things. Store takes up time. You want your officer spending, you want a million dollar store, it's going to take his time. He's going to have to be over there. He's going to be talking. Your managers are going to have to be doing stuff. Uh, you've got a committee. We have a advisory board committee. They meet at the store. That's me, key staff, and the advisory board. Um, monthly, we bi-monthly, we have the key staff and all of their staff meet twice a month. And then, of course, weekly, the managers are meeting and going over what the sales are. And what's happening that week, it changes around the building. Uh, and then there's my periodic stop bys. So the officer still has to stop by and see what's going on. I'm anywhere from two to four times, and that's anywhere from 15 to one hour each stop. And as to say hello to everybody, I, sometimes I don't know the new guys, and they need to know that how come this guy just came in off the dock? And I got four ways to get into the building, and I use all of them. They don't know when I, or where I'm coming in. And uh, I, I have to say, I've never caught anybody sitting around or sleeping or smoking in the wrong area. They, they, just, they don't know when the major's going to stop by. Better be on your best behavior, you know. And uh, so they're out, uh, and I'm talking with them and having a good time. Uh, a bad store will take up your time. You've got staff turnover, which is nasty. Fighting with the staff and the grumbling and the griping and the garbage. You're going to get all the phone calls from the public and the staff about your store. The dirt on the street, what's out front, what isn't getting picked up. It's taking your time. So, again, if you're going to have to put in time, put it in for a good store. Don't put it in for a bad one. Periodic drop-bys, you're going to be four to eight times anyway because you're putting out fires. So buy some asbestos shoes and get out there and stomp them down because... You're going to have it. you got a bad store. Take care of it. You don't want Major Beardsley to come. Uh, to reduce turnover, you have to increase your wages. We, we start at 13.8% above prime or the minimum wage. We're starting in the $8 range. And that's for the first 90. After 90, it's 22.5. We're at 888 for our smallest and person there, part-time or full-time. And most of our staff right now, because they've got more than two years in or three years in, uh, they're almost at $10 or over. You've got to pay the money to get the right people. You, you want, uh, and, I, and I put on here the staff manager, uh, pay top dollar for it because you want a $20,000 a year person as your top manager, Go for it. Praise the Lord, you got them. But that's what you're going to get in your sales. My case manager, I won't tell you what she makes, or my staff manager, I won't tell you what she makes, but she was a staff sergeant in the U.S. Air Force in, in their uh, uh, warehousing. She knows how to do it. She knows how to run it. But i got to pay her the money to get it, and I get it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't get calls at night anymore. I'm not being asked, you know, do you got a refrigerator? We don't get those calls. It's done. She covers it. Something happens. You know, I got a call from her last night. It was just to say we double sales. We're going to go 17 cents on rice. Yay! You know, told her that. Oh, great way to go. They love it. We're uh, implementing, we believe, next year a, a, uh, an incentive. We're going to make our goal. We're going to set our financial goal. We go over it. We're going to take whatever is over by a percentage of that and it's going to be shared amongst all staff. We want them to know you're important. We're a store. We're a business. Now, forewarn you, then, stores, a bad store is the same way. Oh, increase your trash bills. Throw it away. Don't keep it. Advertise. Paid to advertise. I've already told you all the things that I've, I've advertised. Uh, you've got disgruntled staff. It's going to cost you anyway, so you might as well pay the money. 
the time, energy. As I said, if I made 30000 last year on this store, I'd close it. They're not worth the headache. I got one in Spearfish. I told them, we're going to close this down. It isn't worth it. Well, we made 35000 last year. Yeah, but I was up there every other week, and I'm you know, dealing with this fight, that fight. I got ulcers over that store. It isn't worth thirty-five thousand. I'll give you thirty-five to get rid of it. You gotta think that way, folks. So make it a good store, you know. And uh, as a and when hire a janitor, nothing is worse than a trashy-looking, dirty store. They're not gonna come. You want to shop at Walmart that's filthy? No. Well lit, beautiful, wide aisles. Widen your aisles, folks. Last year, we threw half our racks away up in Spearfish and doubled our sales because people didn't want to go in there. It's too short. They don't want to be, you know, butt to butt looking at shirts. They want to be able to get around. You want sales? Get them around there. Uh, oh, I had to put this in there. This kills me. This was Spearfish when I took it over. It's like, ah! Get rid of it. If it sits, throw it away. Put it, it, and I told them, look, see this pile? If it's clothing, it goes to the right pile. But there's something that might sell there. If it might, it would have. It isn't, so don't. Throw it away. And, you know, we didn't even know what was in here. I found Christmas stuff that was so old, I think, you know, one of our ex-presidents are used it in his place. I don't know. It's just terrible. Just, I just have um, a question about your rate. Do you rate everything even though your rate person that when you bundle them, they take everything? Is that true? Yeah. Are there yeah. jeans or synthetic or Oh yeah. Everything goes in. Our people or? take anything. Do you yep. have to remove the zippers and buttons nope. and things like that? No. They just take it as is. Because yep. we sell our rakes to a local manufacturer, but you might get you might get a little system. more for it. Say we're not. We're taking the lowest level because they, you know, we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to take the time. Uh, I put these in there in that we we paid six hundred bucks for t-shirts. That's advertisement, folks. This is uh, tough enough to wear pink. We have a whole week. Everybody gets it. All staff. Now this is my staff from the core. My wife, myself. Uh, this is core. My son. Uh, these are store. This is all of our staff from all over the Black Hills. We all show up, get our picture taken. Uh, we buy this. The $600 goes to the Cancer Society. They get it. And uh, we got a company in town, or the newspaper says, you send us a picture of your staff, and we will put it on one day in this big section of pictures that says, tough enough to wear pink. And we did. We've done it two years. We got in both years. And I tell you, people notice that. They walk in and say, hey, I wasn't here last week, but you guys are tough enough to wear pink. Thanks for contributing to the Cancer Society. It's worth our money. We get it back. Also, the staff loved it. On that day, I actually wore cowboy boots. And I had a cowboy hat. I didn't want to wear it for the picture. I had a cowboy hat for that day. It was because it's, it's run during our big uh, rodeo. And so the rodeo guys wear it on the same day. Tough enough to wear pink. And so we did it. This, uh, this group uh, here is a TV station. They came out and videoed us. They showed up two years ago to pack food boxes at the store and help run the store. They liked it so much they came back this year and uh, did it again. And uh, did it all up. And uh, I, I, I pointed out I wanted this because the lady on the end there is... Miss South Dakota. Now take a look at the smile on this guy's face. He's one of my staff. <laughs> it was worth getting his picture. He, just, he was the one that helped make sure that they packed the boxes right and everything. Steve. And uh, oh, he just, he, Miss South Dakota. And uh, he was right there. Interesting enough, this lady here, Cheryl, who's here, she's one of the station manager people, introduces us to her. My wife is talking to her earlier about becoming a, the very first member of our women's auxiliary that we started. She was the first, Miss South Dakota was the second. She knows her, she knows, you know. We got them. We got her mother now. She's going to be going off at the end of the year because she's so busy, but her mom's staying on the board of the women's auxiliary. First to 
Boa tarde.